The holy grail of robust and synchronized global expansion remains elusive. That's according to the IMF's chief economist. In fact, six years after the world emerged from a financial crisis and recession, the deteriorating picture shows a global recovery that's still uneven from Australia to Germany. Brazil and Russia's economies are contracting. Japan and the euro area are struggling to impress and long-time growth engine China is decelerating. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy is nearly strong enough for central bankers to consider raising interest rates. Now, how is all of this impacting on South Africa? Well, to discuss, I have with me Minka Marie Statler of the South African Institute of Race Relations. Welcome. Always such a pleasure to host you on our show. Thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Let's talk uh, about one of your latest publications called Fast Facts on the Economy. How is all of what I've just mentioned affecting the South African economy? So it is affecting the South African economy. For example, as most people will know, we haven't seen much growth after, over the last few years. And what our data showed, or the data that we collected and then analyzed showed, was South Africa is unlikely to grow more than 2%, and 2% is probably even being optimistic um, by 2019. So that's another four years. And uh, you know this, this is quite worrying, because mm -hmm. in South Africa, we do face a lot of challenges like high unemployment, and the economy you know, directly affects those people in yeah. the ability to find work. Uh, we know that the electricity, electricity crisis in South Africa has shaved off around 1%. That's according to economists. So already yes. that brings it down to 2%. 3% would have been a healthy growth for South Africa. Very much, yeah. Um, given its performance and its healthy recovery fo following the recession. But I want to talk about China because there's a lot of focus on China, the slowdown in China weighing heavily on global commodity producers, commodity producers across the globe, South Africa included. You've taken a very interesting position in your paper saying that this is not cyclical as opposed to what of a lot of the economists are maintaining that this is cyclical and now is the opportunity for these sectors to look at ways to position themselves to take advantage of the next boom. Yes, so we don't believe it's cyclical. We do believe that obviously South Africa is affected by what happens globally, but what is affecting South Africa the most is the policy environment in which we find ourselves at the moment, and also the policy environment that's being planned, you know, going into the future. And so saying to commodities, uh, people in the commodity sectors, you know, to reposition themselves, it, it's more difficult than that. In fact, we missed the last boom, to be quite honest. Exactly. We were exactly. in a recession. Exactly. And so... What we are suggesting is, is, is looking at labor legislation in particular. Mm -hmm. So these you know, manufacturers, mining, agriculture, in fact, our sector that's doing well is the financial sector or high tech sector as such, but our commodity mm -hmm. sectors are, are not doing well at all. And it's difficult because um, they are constrained by very strict sure. regulation, making it difficult to hire people, making it difficult to you know, employ people, especially on a large scale. So they tend to be pulling themselves, you know, c closing off a little bit, trying to keep things going without too much risk and so forth. And that's all due to the policies that are out there that are affecting okay. them. And it's particularly uh, labor legislation and powerful unions. Now, we obviously understand the role of unions. We obviously understand especially in a country with the history of South Africa, the role of unions. Mm -hmm. But we do feel that also with the high unemployment, the low economic growth, and the level of inequality that there is in the country, we do need uh, um, more people, the private sector to be allowed to employ more people, not allowed, but to be uh, incentivized or encouraged, or it must be easier for them to employ low skilled people on a large scale. And that isn't happening at the moment at all. How would you describe investor sentiment towards South South Africa right now, Investors, given policy challenges. Yes, it's not very positive. There are a couple of bills, in fact, a lot of bills in Parliament at the moment. One is called the Promotion and Protection of Investment Bill, for example, mm -hmm. of 2015. And what that bill says, and what the government is saying, is that it wants to make sure you know South Africa is protected. Wants to make sure that South Africa uh, benefits uh, hugely from investment. But what it's also doing is, especially overseas foreign investors, are not keen on South Africa anymore. They 
will rather look towards Kenya, even Botswana, even Mozambique, or even elsewhere in the world, rather than South Africa, because they are so constrained. We know that in the budget speech this year, the president mentioned that foreign nationals would not be allowed to own uh, property in South Africa. That again makes it difficult for foreign companies to actually operate here, to actually employ people. I, I know I keep coming back to that, yeah. but it's the biggest issue. And so I investor sentiment is actually not positive. And for example, recently, the government also came out and was quite negative about mm -hmm. Western, you know, Western investments. And yet our data shows that foreign direct investment, 85% of it comes from the West, only about 4% comes from China and even less from Russia. So we're a bit like, wait a minute, we can't put all our eggs in one basket. We should really still be incentivizing, still be being, uh, you know, encouraging uh, and, and inviting people to invest in our country. Would you say that policy shifts has been radical? We, we think recently we do following so, the implementation and the buy-in of the national development plan yes. which is why you've taken this position on gear yes so definitely in the last 10 years so 10 years ago South Africa was growing at 5% it was fantastic or you know mm. for South Africa it's absolutely wonderful and that's when gear was was in you know was the economic policy that was being implemented but a lot of people might just jump in there which I'm doing right now to say <laughs> that fine. it was actually a very interesting prosperous time for the economy given um, you know, the new uh, democratic dispensation that took effect during that time and the openness to the economy and luring investors in as well. Exactly, but we had our policies were, were geared towards that, okay. no okay. pun intended or pun intended. It, our policies were encouraging that and we did see a lot of flourishing. And yes, one can say it was the first 10 years of, our, of the new dispensation of our new democracy. Um, you know, and, but at around 2009, which one can also say coincided with a leadership change mm -hmm. within the ruling party, uh, we saw gear disappear, um, be phased out. And so we do think that the policies that are being brought in are very radical. Mm -hmm. We do think, we obviously try our best to see um, the heart behind it, the mind behind it, the thinking behind it. But to be quite honest, um, we find a lot of constitutional gaps in in the policies because we have a look, we, we have an expert at the IOR who literally looks at every single line of every single bill that comes through to make sure that it's constitutional, to make sure that it will have its intended impact rather than something else. And and, and, and it's not just um, the investment bill, as we call it, but the expropriation bill, the copyright bill, looking at intellectual property and the, the, the ownership of that. All these bills are quite radical and quite different from what we saw 10 years ago. Well, the ruling party, the ANC, seems to be quite um, stuck on this policy and has indicated no shift in any other direction currently. So given that, what would be the outlook for the economy? The if we continue not, on this trajectory? If we continue on this trajectory, it's not good at all. So we predict that and predictions are, when, when, we, when I say predict, it's almost more a scenario. Yeah. So we'd rather not forecast or predict, also not the right word, we'd rather just say a scenario. So by 2019, seeing the rand at around 17 rand 50 to the dollar, but some analysts even believe that we can go up to 24 rand to the dollar, which which in, in, in export terms which might is be not great for us, exports. but it's not, it's not what we want to see. We're already mm -hmm. seeing rand to the sterling as 22 rand to the sterling, and that's quite shocking. And we really believe that if the government continues on this trajectory, and we've said this over and over again, we really unfortunately don't feel too positive about future eco 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 economic growth. But I have to say that as much as they say they want to stick to you know, they're, they're, they're going to make this work. They have listened to us here and there, the expropriation bill. Mm -hmm. We saw a little amendment happen, which we, with other organizations, feel help, we helped uh, um, uh, talk about that, you know, helped discussion, discourse around that develop. And we really hope that the same will happen with the investment bill and with the copyright bill as well. So mm -hmm. as much as they say they, they want to stay in this trajectory, I think there are people in government who are open to hear alternative views as well. Very bleak current outlook, but insightful nonetheless. Thank you so mm. much for your time. Always a pleasure.